All right. Uh, I'm back working on this uh, call file stuff. And uh, last time we got the PE call file parser going really well. So my PE dump, we kind of reached a limit where it was like the next big thing to do here is I guess we do have relocations for each section. We could go back and work on that. Um, this is for later when we're doing a visualizer. So I think I think we do this first. But then my big plan is to add in a new program here. So we'll go to um, here. And instead of doing dump, we'll do... Um, gen or something like that. We're going to try to generate one. So this will be the next big step is to work on that. But let's do one small thing here, which is a dump relocations for each section. So when we look here, we have the section headers. Right. And so we're printing out these, but some of them have relocations. And none of that's getting printed. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking something like this, probably. So, now what we need to do is we need to figure out how those relocations are going to get parsed out. So, we don't know yet how to actually pull the, the relocation data out of the sections. Parse relocation data. So, let's hop in to our documentation. Ugh, it's, it's painful every time. But here we go. Section table. The file pointer to the beginning of the relocations entry for the section. This is set to zero for executable images or if there are no relocations. Relocation entry. Okay, so this is just the same thing. So I'm going to guess that it's the same layout as the relocation section. Okay, so a relocation. E.H relocation. Okay, 
base relocations. Okay, here it is. Here's the stuff we want. So, if we're understanding correctly, what's going to happen is we're going to get relocations for each section. Now, do we have over here section relocks equals zero, section relocks equals push an array, arena, section count, Then we're going to look at each section, and each one is going to get some number of these. Which we now need to compute. So our count estimate is going to be that going to be? Um, size divided by two. Okay, so we want the size in this case to come from the section header. Oh, we have a relocation count, not a byte count. Is that... Let me just check something here. Section headers. The number of relocation entries for the section. Interesting. Okay. That's weird because... Well... Let's try this. We were looking earlier before I started officially at this. Let's put in base dot ob uh, main dot obj. Yes, grab the cough stuff. And now timestamp pointer to symbol table so I wish I could just click on this and pull up the relevant type over here Where is our cough header? Machine. Number of sections. Date time. Pointer to symbol table. Size of optional. number of symbols number of sections oh right that doesn't go over there that comes down here the size of optional header Man, that's a bunch of bit flags. Do you see that? It's like 
wish I could pin it so it would stay there, but it's like coloring each bit and naming it. That's cool. And then we get the beginning of um, the section table. So the question is, where is one of these that has um, relocations? Um, the second one, so we should see debug percent or debug dollar s, and the size of raw pointer to raw string name virtual size. Um, Mad Flash nineteen. This is a hex editor called Imhex. I um actually closed it. Let's see if we can pull it up. Yeah, Imhex, which I downloaded for free this morning after someone recommended it yesterday. And it does a lot of cool like automatic visualization on top of the hex. So it's really cool for reversing engineering, but also what I'm doing right now is just using some built-in information that it has about the file format I'm studying to get me some inspection. pointer to relocation. So here's where another feature I want that I'm not sure is present. I want to jump to there we go. Boom. Now I don't know what type it is detecting here. Like I see the lowest level type, the brown type, right? The, the fact that it's a U32 virtual address. But I don't know what struct that's a part of. Relocations, virtual address, symbol table, index, type. So virtual address is four bytes. How is there three bytes there? This must be Relocations actually starts at B9, okay. So four bytes there, four bytes there for symbol table index. Does that match what we have for base relocation? This says virtual offset and then block size. This says symbol table index. And then it says type, type MOE. Okay. This is not at all like things we've seen before. So I want to figure out where that's coming from. What is that, a relocation? Yeah, that doesn't match anything we were looking at from the other type of relocation, so it's different. Um, let's just start from the beginning and look at every reference to the word relocation. There's a lot of them. Here we go.
Okay. Virtual address. The address of the item to which relocation is applied. This is the offset from the beginning of the section plus the value of the section's RVA slash offset field. So it sounds like they're saying it's a vert RVA, actually. It's not relative to the beginning of the section. It's the offset from the beginning of the section plus the value of the section's offset field itself. Um, okay. off a zero base index into the symbol table this symbol gives the address that is you to be used for the relocation if the specified symbol has section storage class and the symbols address is the address with the first section of the same name A value that indicates the kind of relocation that should be performed. Valid relocation types depend on machine type. See type indicators. Okay, I think that this is the wrong kind of type, the one that it's using right here. I think it's using this, and I think that that's probably wrong. This looks like type as in the type system that goes along in the code view stuff. And I think these are using that, but they're actually encoding something different because like OA here is AMD section, the 16-bit section index of the section that contains the target. Huh, it's kind of an esoteric thing for it to be though. Guess it could be. Are they all A's? No, here's a type B. Oh, MOAs are B, not A. So that one is esoteric. The 32-bit offset of the target from the beginning of its section. This is used to support debugging information and static thread local storage. storage class sim class section the symbols address is the beginning of the section section is usually in the same file except when the object file is part of an archive in that case the section can be found in any other object file in the archive that has the same archive member name as the current object file the relationship with the archive member name is used in the linking of import tables that is the idata section okay <coughs> There are a lot of these for different processors, huh? Very, 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 very many of them. Okay. The 64-bit VA of the relocation target. The 32-bit VA. Following relocation type indicators. 
The type field of the relocation record indicates what kind of relocation should be performed. Different relocation types are defined for each type of machine. Okay. It's a little confusing here. So I can't quite intuit what it's saying these mean. Like, so this one makes sense. The relocation is ignored. The 64-bit virtual address of the relocation target. So is it just saying it's creating a pointer to the thing that needs to be relocated? And so we're going to know that the, the first, we have three fields, right? We have a, a virtual address, a symbol type, a symbol index and then this type thing so this is telling us what that the that the the address is a 64-bit VA but it can't be it's gonna be four bytes either way right the virtual address here is the virtual address here and it's always it's hard-coded what that points to right I mean the description here says what that means the 32-bit relative address from the byte following the relocation the 32-bit relative address. <laughs> so this could be telling us what we're pointing at. A 64-bit virtual address, a 32-bit virtual address of the relocation target. Thirty-two bit address without an image base, an RVA. The sixteen bit section index of the section that contains the target. Well, I don't exactly know. I mean, we can grab these. At least we know that doing that will be useful. Okay. No need for an estimate. We're going to get the real count right from this section.
Do I actually want base relocations here? I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to want. I'm probably going to want... PE cough relocation. Right? Like this. We don't actually need a pointer though. We can just get PE cough relocation pointer of input data dot string plus the sections right, we're gonna need section relock counts locations F off sec relock counts I equals section relocation count Input data size, so we make sure it's going to fit, and then we plop it in. Okay, so that gives us the cough relocations, and then the question is, can I just dump them?
now the relocation, the cough relocation is a V off. A symbol index and a type. Okay, interesting. So for each symbol, we can get multiple relocations. And each of those relocations can have a different address and type. Interesting. Okay. So I gotta take a look at why that would be a bunch of interesting stuff like that. That might be because it's debug info or something. So I wanna take a look at that again. It might be, yeah.
not the typical case that I'm thinking of for relocations. But this here, we get an, a symbol, an address, and a rel32. And that's like what we get over and over again for a bunch of different symbols. What do those mean? Rel32, the 32-bit relative address from the byte following the relocation. So, first things first, section, give me your real number. So section four is R data. This up here was debug percent as yes, yeah, so that's going to be different. This has a size of 1.1 kilobytes and starts from here. So these aren't really V offs, are they? Because this doesn't have a V off. Well, I bet they are. These are v-offs relative to the beginning of the section, but I think this is more like a section offset. Ah, uh, but I bet you still have to subtract if there is a v-off here. So what's confusing is this, the terminology of v-offs and f-offs makes perfect sense when you're talking about an image file that gets loaded because the file offsets are offsets within the image file and the virtual offsets are offsets within the loaded virtual image. It's like the two versions, right? But an object file doesn't get converted into a loaded virtual image. An object file gets processed into an image, right? It gets converted into an image file. So these are offsets that are encoded as basically as offsets into this section, but according to the docs, it sounds like they have this V off here added in. Now that V off is, looks like it's always zero in this object file, but I don't know if that's a requirement. Um, but they are irrelevant, right? These V offs would always be irrelevant because the linker is actually gonna place this object in with a bunch of other objects and merge certain sections together and stuff. So they couldn't have a meaningful v off in the first place the link and it's not until you have an image that virtual offsets are getting assigned so this would always be meaningless but it might be tied to this so it's a little confusing but then presumably this is saying all of Thirty two bit relative address. I don't know what it's talking about. Confusing. That contains the target. So symbol index one thousand fifty seven when when we're going to do relocations for the object file wherever this section gets placed are we saying that this part right here is the beginning of a four byte pointer
It's a little confusing. Four byte relative thirty two. Mm. I still don't have a picture of how this part works. Let's um, let's look for something else. I don't have these symbol indexes anywhere. Like, I don't know how many symbols there are supposed to be. Symbol table, symbol count. I bet you that is something I still need to do, right? I bet you that wasn't in the image files. So let's do that, and then let's do. I'm gonna do a five-minute break. I'll get uh, if there's if there's anyone hanging out. Uh, I'll wait a few minutes in case there's anyone hanging out who wants to chat. Before I take a break, I'm going to take a five-minute break to get away from looking at the screen for a minute and uh, transition to the next task, which is going to be to dump this symbol table. Um, just for good measure, while I'm given that minute a minute to pass, I want to see... Yeah, this has a symbol table of zero. That makes sense. Okay, so this is a unique object file feature that I need to be dealing with. Okay. Oh. Alrighty, I'm going to be back in five minutes or less.
Okay. So I want to track down that symbol table. Let's start from the beginning. The file offset of the cough symbol table or zero if there is no cough symbol table. This value should be zero for images because cough debugging information is deprecated. The number of entries in the symbol table. This value should be zero. Okay. Bunch of optional header stuff. Group sections, cough symbol table, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna do, Let's see if we can get away with doing it this way. This always feels trickier than I want it to be. Cough relocations. Yeah, okay. Cough symbol table. Okay, so let's um let's call this a symbol record. So we get name for eight bytes the value that is associated with the symbol the interpretation of this field depends on the section number and storage class typical meaning is the relocatable address okay section number it says a number that represents a type Microsoft tool set this field to OX20 function or OXO not a function This is eight, eight, two, tightly packed, okay. Okay, 
Let's track down some of these real quick. Storage class. Type def u8 pe cough symbol storage class. Define pe cough symbol storage class x list as So these are actually S8s. PE cough symbol storage class. Or I suppose we could do it as a U8 if we're going to do it like that. Okay, let's do it that way. Mm-hmm. Pilfers, uh, you to sort of missed it, but I do have it up here in the background. We were checking it out before the the main event started, and then I popped it up to check out a file. Um, although, I do believe I've detected one mistake in the um, PE pattern here, which is that the, um, they're using the uh, type enum from what looks like the code views type 
Oops, new system. Um, for the, uh, what was this? So this is correct, but this, I think is the wrong thing because, where was it? Cough. Uh, relocation. Yeah, this type right here is supposed to be like these things. But it's still pretty cool. And I appreciate the recommendation from yesterday for sure. Auto evaluate. And what is that doing exactly? Hmm, I see. I see. Well, I'm not I'm not trying to fix the pattern. But I get I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so that's how we do the symbol records, and we have the storage class. Um, let's track down. Okay, here they're using the same type. So this matches the code view style type info. Okay, so in theory, this could be more complex than what I sketched out right here. I guess we could just grab the whole thing. Um, it is gonna be stuff we need later on either way.
Okay. So each of those is probably going to need a little printer. PE straight from cough symbol type. Cough symbol storage class. Two of these coming right up. So the second one is easy. That's just a regular old one like this with this being storage class and this being cough symbol storage class X list. Okay, so we want to do two parts here. It's going to be a little interesting. Switching on the type. Filling it in like this. Off symbol type X list low X list gives us our low and then yeah this one's going to require an arena Then switching on, this should be type and OXFF. This should be type shifted by one and OXFF. <sighs> E cough symbol type high null would mean we do nothing pointer would mean we replace result with straight push f arena pointer percent s low pointer function function array Yeah, that seems good.
Okay, now I do need to go in and add in the enums. Good. And now we need to go back into the type format here. This we haven't actually touched the auxiliary symbol thing. Zero or more auxiliary symbol table records immediately follow each standard symbol table record. However, typically not more than one auxiliary symbol table record follows a standard symbol table record, except for dot .file records with long file names. Each auxiliary record is the same size as a standard symbol table record. But rather than define a new symbol, the auxiliary record gives additional information on the last symbol defined. The choice of which of several formats to use depend on the storage class field. Currently defined formats for auxiliary symbol table records are shown in section 5.5, auxiliary symbol records. Okay, so 18 bytes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, eight, twelve, eight, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Got it. Yeah. It's like that, right? <sighs> Okay, another thing we haven't done yet is we haven't gone and learned about how the name works. An array of eight bytes. This array is padded with nulls on the right if the name is less than eight bytes long. Zero is a field that is set to all zero if the name is longer than eight bytes. An offset to the string table. Okay, got it. So this is going to be like this. Right, we're going to have raw and then we're going to have this thing that's like zeros and um f off so if these are zero if this is a zero then we use the f off if this is not a zero we use the raw version makes sense um Cool. Cool. So now what I'm going to want is a parse. <sighs> um, there's only one symbol table. So it feels like this could go before the section table. Parse symbol table. PE dump. Cough symbol. Uh, what was the 
What was the PE name for that? Cough, header, symbol count. Okay, so we want to be able to do you dump cough symbol. Okay, so we want the cough symbol records to go like this. Symbol table F off. part that's a little confusing is I don't know if the symbol count counts the auxiliary same symbols to or if it if it's going to run past that point and I think it must count all of them, which means this is like the max count that we might have, but it's not the correct count. And what we ha are going to have to do is, first of all, we can use that fact to do a bounds check here. So there we get our record pointer, and then we begin doing
I don't think we need this. Because what's going to happen is we're going to go, okay, for each, for as long as record remains less than, let's just grab a PE cough symbol, OPL is going to be record plus the number of symbols. And what we're going to do is we're going to go Step one is going to be, right, right, right. Okay, so we have to have a PE dump cough symbol. Dest symbol equals cough symbols. We'll write into dest symbol right here. And then we'll do dest symbol plus equals one. And then we'll do For U32 I a equals zero I is less than the record aux symbol count. Aux symbol count. Let's pull that out because we want to move the record pointer around. I plus equals one. And wait, why don't we just do record plus equals aux symbol count for now, right? like that that should be good what plus one to consume the symbol we got plus all the auxiliary symbols then bounds test again do the work okay for now I think that can be cough symbol so we'll resolve the name and we'll keep all the other information just as is we're dropping the auxiliary symbols no let's not do that let's keep those as well so really all the death symbol is doing is rearranging them so that we don't have auxiliary symbol auxiliary records in between the symbol records and resolving the names
And then what we can do once all of that is done is we can finally find out the final count, which is going to be the thing we get when we take the dest record, the dest symbol, and subtract the cough symbol's base. And we can arena pop amount the max count minus the final count times the size of PE dump cough symbol, right? So this is how many we actually took. We didn't put anything else on the arena between now and then. That might change. If we end up doing auxiliary symbols, that won't work. So Maybe I won't do that in this case. Maybe I won't do that in this case. I'm trying to think if there are any other ways to do this. I could scan all of the symbols up front, sum all the auxiliaries, and then that is the amount that you subtract from the original count to find out how many actual cough symbols we have. And you're only scanning twice, but the first scan is, you know, just leaping across them to grab these. Is not not wonderful though that's two cache passes still for an 18 byte struct i could some other fancy stuff i could do to avoid the double pass i could build it as a linked list as it's going i could grow the auxiliary memory backwards from the end Con as long as it consumes less than one full symbol or less than or equal to one full symbol every time you take an auxiliary that would work I'm not sure Relocations, there they are. The next big question is can I get those symbols getting printed, getting dumped out? So cough relocations, sec relox. Symbol table. Cough symbol count equals Dest symbol minus cough symbols. symbol record right 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 so the way I want to do it is by looking at this one this is a
situation like this. Four over the cough symbol count. Name equals percent s. Val equals percent u. Sec number equals percent d. Type percent s. Storage class percent s. Auxiliary symbol count percent u. So we're looking at cough symbol, cough symbols. There's the name, the value, the section number type string, the storage class string, and the auxiliary symbol count type string equals PE straight from cough symbol type. That's going to require an arena, a scratch arena, and a cough symbol type storage class string is straight from cough symbol storage class cough symbol storage class there we go looking at our results cough symbols Okay. Okay. Type null. Type null. Storage class static. 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 Log symbol count zero 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 one. one. Section number one. Section number negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Comp ID. Feet. That zero zero. Vol.md. Static lock symbol count. Directive debug. TLS. Okay, that probably isn't right. Um, name equals. So that must be wrong because this must be wrong. Okay, so a couple things come to mind actually. First of all, this is cool, but I actually need this, this, this. This, okay, now we have the integer indexes. Now we gotta track down why the symbol name is coming out wrong right here. Um, 
right, so we thought we had that right. So let's just take a look again at this name representation and offset into the string table. Okay, how do I find the string table then? Cough, string table. The position of this table is found by taking the symbol table address and the cough header and adding the number of symbols multiplied by the size of a symbol. The beginning of the cough string table are four bytes that contain the total size in bytes of the rest of the string table. Okay, got it. So we need to pull out the string table before we even parse the symbol table successfully. Um, String table size equals the U32 that you get. Right here. And if table F off plus table size plus four plus, not four, plus string table size is less than or equal to input data dot size, then we can continue successfully. String table. The cough string table would be pointed at input data dot string plus table f off plus table size plus four. And the string table size would be cough string table size would be the string table size. So this does not start from here. It starts from the, oh yeah, let's get a U32 string table F off based on this. So this just becomes string table f off plus the record name, and this becomes data plus string table f off plus string table size. Or better yet, we could just do string table and string table plus string table size. Nice. So that's my arena scratch pool variable name 
showing up right there that we just got to come through. Don't think any of those are mine. Before main, that might be mine. That's that. Yeah, these are definitely both mine. Look at that. Now we're getting external symbols here. Oh. Yeah, some of these look off. Emit F, accume end. And it looks like the amount that they're off by is getting worse. Or maybe it's the long arena. Let me just try something here. Mm, I think I know what it is. The offsets must be including the size as part of the table layout. There we go. Now these make sense. All right, cool. So we now have the list of symbols that are exported or that are available internally statically available. Null, type null, type null, type null, equals function. Surely some of these are, oh, that says error. So why is the type string coming out wrong? Record, um, type string equals, let's take a look at that. Remedy. What are you talking about? Oh, we must not be doing an object file, huh? Looking for a case where low comes out as an error. There we go. Yeah, so it's giving me 32. High function. What? 
is it talking about? Feels like the bites are in the wrong order or the things aren't quite lined up right. So we're getting a 20, but we're getting it in the little, uh, the small bite, not in the big bite, right? So we got a type. That looks like this. So that's OX0020, right? The little one is the correct. The two. Is it talking about bytes? Is it really using bytes or is it using four bits? says one thing but I wonder if it means what it says really um, let me see if I can find the symbol table here in the these are sections uh, somewhere in here I wish I knew how to use this a little better I'm sure some way I could tell it that I want to find the pointer to the symbol table. There it is. And then jump to that location. So, yes, this must be the beginning of the symbol table. Eight for the name, four for the value, two for the section number. Null, storage class static, type null, type null, makes it very simple. Value section number type null storage class name storage class type null name section number type null value section number Storage class type null, type null, type null, type null. Type null. <sighs> type null. Okay, let me try to line this up with what I'm seeing over here then. So base before main is not going to show up, but text n m n will. Text m n 
has one auxiliary. This is a name pointer to somewhere else. Has a value. Section number five, type question mark. Yeah, it agrees with me that that's funky. Okay, where's the next one? Regular, 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 regular. Previous error, debug percent S. Then auxiliary symbols, there's one. Name is something else. Type. Huh. You're not going to find anything there. Hmm. I think this must be it trying to say that this is a function, but why is it doing it the wrong way? Do all of my object files actually defy the documentation as well as the the encoded layout given by the this this program? Like they they also happen to make the same assumption from the docs and from their testing, but then the, the tools are actually different. The following values are defined for base type, although Microsoft generally does not use these, and set the least significant byte to zero instead, which is used to indicate types. However, the possible cough values are listed here for completeness. The most significant byte specifies whether the symbol is a pointer to or function returning or array of the base type that is specified in the LSB. Microsoft tools use this field only to indicate whether the symbol is a function, so you get more information. This seems so weird. Okay, let's take a look at a different object file just for, for, just because I'm curious. If we looked at, actually, let me do this. I'm going to continue investigating, um, but I'm going to take a, I'm gonna take a five minute break first. So I will be right back.
Okay. So again, I want to find the symbol table here. So I want to jump to, no, not to 2A. Give me the whole field. Jump to there. Here's our symbol table. And presumably, if I keep looking through these, Yeah, they are doing it this way too. Just like that on all of them, I guess. <sighs> That's so weird though. Okay, so I think the only thing I can imagine making sense of this is switching them. No, that doesn't even do anything because, you know what, the only thing that makes sense is this. Wait. Hold on. Yeah, but that's not a separate byte. I'm getting OX20. Which is like this, right? Like they're doing least significant nibble, most significant nibble instead of bite now why is mr. fourth base DLL still blocked no reason okay Okay, so I think that's right. We're still skipping over auxiliary symbols here. And I suppose we might want to be able to look at those, but I'm not sure. Let's take a look at what's in an auxiliary symbol. And maybe we can call it there on the uh, diving into the symbol records for now. An auxiliary record can have any format that the tools can recognize, but 18 bytes must be allocated for them so that the symbol table is maintained as an array of regular size. Currently, Microsoft tools recognize auxiliary formats for the following kinds of records. Function definitions, function begin and end symbols, bf.ef, weak externals, file names, and section definitions. The traditional COF design also includes auxiliary record formats for arrays and structures. Microsoft tools do not use these, but instead place that symbolic information. Visual C++ debug format in the debug section. Symbol table record marks the beginning of a function definition. It 
if it has the following a storage class of external, a type that indicates that it is a function. See, it says OX2O whenever. I think they must have described it wrong. It's the only thing that makes sense. At a section number that is greater than zero, note that a symbol table record that has a section number of undefined does not define the function and does not have an auxiliary record. Function definition, symbol records. Tag index. The symbol table index of the corresponding .bf, begin function, symbol record. The size of the executable code for the function itself, if the function is in its own section, the size of raw data, and the section header is greater or equal to this field, depending on alignment considerations. Pointer to line number. Pointer to next function, the symbol table index of the record for the next function. If the function is the last in the symbol table, this field is set to zero. Okay. For each function definition in the simple table, three items describe the beginning, ending, and number of lines. Each of these symbols has a storage class function. The symbol record named begin function, the value field is unused. A symbol record named LF lines in function, the value field gives the number of lines in the function. Weak externals are a mechanism for object files that allow flexibility at link time. A module can contain an unresolved external symbol, but it can also include an auxiliary record that indicates that if someone is not present at link time, another external symbol is used to resolve references instead. The definition of someone is linked, then an external reference to the symbol is resolved normally. So the definition of someone is not linked, then all references to the weak external someone refer to sim2 instead. The external symbol sim2 must always be linked. Typically, it is defined in a module that contains the weak reference to similar weak externals, blah, 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 tag index characteristics. The format follows a simple ta ta table record with storage class file. So I didn't look for other interesting storage classes. I'm just seeing external and static over and over again. So like, do we have file? No. Um, storage class. <sighs> we don't have any of those. It looks like we're really just talking about static, which is a three. And external, which is a two, are the only two that are actually showing up. <sighs> like, it's not even using the storage class section for the sections. Like this. Okay, I think that was everything. I, I, I don't think that I want to do any of the auxiliaries right this moment. Leaving them marked as auxiliary is fine. And it looks like a lot of this stuff is like documenting, over, is over documenting old stuff. And like the real truth here is that there's like very few variations here. Still don't have the full picture of how relocations come together with these to make sense. 
but that's okay. Let's do, whoops, not you. Let's do save this. Let's do save all of this. Oh wait, before I do this, I think we want to pop into PE dump, dump symbol table. Binary PE. Parse and dump object file symbol table. All right. I think I'm going to call it there for today. Got a couple of hours in on this. I still want to get to... this someday but i think two hours to, it turns out it took that much just to get fleshed out on the object file which i thought we were already done with when i said that this is what we were going to do so this will have to be for another time but this is definitely the next big step is to try to get um try to get to the point where i understand how to spit out an executable file and have it actually run and do something like a hello world kind of thing if i can generate a hello world exe then i am one step closer to fully comprehending the data structure and from there can start iterating on generating more and more fancy stuff which will then require me to have better and better dumper tools for inspecting that stuff and visualizing it and all that so uh yeah it seems like a good direction to me but that's it for now with that uh, i will remind you that if you like these streams or you like any of the projects i'm working on I am counting on people like you to consider going over to the membership page on mrforth.com and becoming a supporter or a member. You get uh, all kinds of cool things, whatever you choose to do, and it keeps this project going. So consider that, and I will see you all around the internet. Bye.